The soil contains a bank of phosphate, most of which is tied up with aluminum, iron, and calcium in the plow layer. This represents some 400 to 10,000 kilograms per hectare of unavailable phosphate. More phosphate is contained in the organic matter and is continually released by the biological activity in the soil. The phosphate that is maintained on the surface of the organic material and the minerals is called the soluble phosphate. When this combines with existing moisture in the soil, it becomes phosphate in solution. Only one half to one percent of total phosphate is in this form. And it's this phosphate in solution that the plant can readily use. When conditions are ideal, the phosphate in solution is replenished regularly and provides all the phosphate needed by the plant. So why do we want to add phosphate to the soil if there's already enough there? Well, spring planting conditions are typically less than ideal. Cold and wet conditions slow down root growth, making it more important to have a high concentration of phosphate around the seed. With cold conditions, organic matter also decomposes more slowly, thereby releasing less phosphate into solution. Therefore, it is only necessary to supply phosphate to the plant early in the growing period, when the soil cannot keep up due to less than ideal conditions. Ideally, we want the soil to supply as much of the phosphate as possible. This makes good economic sense. Therefore, we have to take care of the soil to promote the best conditions possible. A number of conditions influence the natural balance of phosphate solubility and availability in the soil. pH, organic matter, drainage, and inherent soil type. Now that we know where the phosphate comes from and how it's made available to the plant, when and how do we need to add phosphate? We'll use corn as an example. The seed itself and its primary root supplies enough phosphate to grow the plant to the two-leaf stage. After this, the plant can only take up the minuscule amount of phosphate that the soil can make available to its very small root system. Phosphate doesn't move around in the soil, so it won't move to the root. Therefore, the only phosphate the plant can take up is the phosphate the root happens to intercept. University research studies in the United States and Canada show that the highest requirements for phosphate in the tissue per gram of plant is before the plant reaches the six leaf stage, or about 25 to 35 days after planting. The placement of side banded fertilizer two inches beside and two inches below the seed leaves the plant potentially short of phosphate at the critical time prior to the six leaf stage. More recent results have come from a 1993-94 university study on corn. The two years of data collected showed a seven bushel response to seed placed phosphate, regardless of the soil test level. Side banded phosphate only gave a response at low soil test levels. At soil test levels of 15 parts per million or above, the only placement that gave a yield response was seed placed phosphate. Research has shown seed placed phosphate to be the most effective. The phosphate goes where it's needed, when it's needed. Alpine liquid is applied at the time of planting in the seed furrow. The result? Enough phosphate is supplied to the plant to get it past the critical six-leaf stage, after which the root system is able to intercept enough from the soil solution.